This is Josh Olmsted. Welcome to Northwest Disc Golf's coverage of Bombing in the Wind, presented by Cherry Bomb. If you enjoy our coverage, please make sure to like and subscribe, and also check out our Patreon page to help support the growth of the channel. On the card today, we have Sam Agee, Rick Saffields, Travis Head, Louis Nava, and Justin Anderson, five Northwest pros looking to battle it out in this PDGA B-tier event from Lincoln City, Oregon. This is just a two-round tournament, so as you can see, Sam had the hot round this morning shooting a minus four, but everyone else is just a few strokes behind, and this promises to be a very exciting final round of disc golf. This is a ball golf course that has been converted into a 36-hole disc golf course just for this event. Um, so for each of these guys, this will be their first chance to really see this course in action. And starting us off, we have hole one, 350-foot par three. And first up, we have Sam Agee from Portland, Oregon. Um, Sam is actually by far the least experienced player uh, on this card. Um, he just recently moved up to pro. He's rated just 938, but he managed to put up around over a thousand rated this morning. Great job by him. Up next, we have Rick Saffields from Salem, Oregon. Rick is actually one of the co-tournament directors of this event. Um, so Rick has had a busy week um, getting ready. So you can see he throws a roller off the tee. Probably trying to keep it under the wind here. Manages to get it to lay down there in bounds. Up next we have Louis Nava from Beaverton. Louis has a huge backhand drive. Louis is an experienced pro. Top rated player on the card at 995. He bombs this hole. He ends up about 65 feet long and left. Up next we have Travis Head. Plays for Aero B and Independence Disc Golf. He's been a pro since 2013 from Vancouver. And last up, we have Justin Anderson from Junction City. He also plays for Cherry Bomb. He throws a great drive, ends up just about 40 feet short, by far the closest of the group. So as you can see, this is one of the windiest tournaments I have ever seen, probably the windiest tournament I've ever seen. Uh, I was talking to Lewis after the round, he said in seven years of disc golf he'd never seen wind this intense. Um, if you watched our coverage of the nuclear meltdown, you probably thought you saw windy there. Well, it has nothing on what these guys are going to see today. Swirling gusts of as high as 40, 50 miles an hour here, as you can see there. Travis misses a short putt. Even the 10 footers are going to be putts you really have to commit to. As you can see, the tree behind Rick there looks like it's a, about to snap in this wind. As Rick ducks out of the way, Sam taps in his bogey. So after hole one, Sam, Travis, and Justin all take bogeys. As Sam's lead slips to three strokes, Rick and Lewis grab some nice pars. Par is definitely going to be the score to get today. Um, I can tell you that par is going to be uh, definitely over a thousand rated. Um, this course is actually very scorable. If there was no wind, you'd probably see these guys going six, seven under par. Um, but today, they'll just be fighting to get pars. So hole two, 405 feet. This is a wide open par three. <sighs> the main obstacle here is the out of bounds that runs along the left side. Most of these holes have OB on the left and right. Definitely making this a very technical, challenging course. Get some nice bonus commentary there from Lewis. Travis, you think your turn to be fake? That's right. Yeah, Stan. There you go. He was telling me that he had destroyers that were flipping like they were 150 Valks out here. Playing in this headwind, you have to throw something really beefy, and unfortunately, sometimes a 
You see players will overcompensate. And Travis ends up out of bounds there, trying to really commit to that hyzer. And you can see here Justin's upshot is going to take a ride. The wind picked that up and dragged it all the way out of bounds. He looks exasperated as he uh, wonders how that ended up out of bounds. As Lewis will lay up a great shot there. Going for back-to-back drop-in pars. As Justin will have to lay up and take his OB5. And Sam here with a chance at birdie. Really difficult birdie. He just will lay up there. And this is a tremendous putt from Rick. Playing from the knees, showing a little course savvy there. Definitely one way to stay out of the wind is to keep it low and not give the wind any chance to throw your disc out of the basket. The rest of the guys will tap out here. So on the second hole, Justin took a penalty double bogey, Travis took a bogey, and the rest of the card takes pars, leaving Sam's lead at three strokes, uh, heading into the third hole. Up next, hole three, we have a long dog leg left, par four, 595 feet. This is the second longest hole on the course, uh, but perhaps one of the easiest holes to birdie. As it's a fairly straightforward par four, and these pros are lucky on this hole. They're getting a tailwind, so they don't have to worry about their discs flipping over. There is OB to the right along that edge, and there is OB to the left of the path. So they're all just going to be looking to throw 300, 350 foot hyzers to the middle. Give themselves a good chance and an upshot here. And here you'll see this is one of the craziest shots all weekend. Sam going for a roller, drags it way out, of, out through the out of bounds. And he flashes a smile knowing he got away with a pretty amazing shot there, keeping that in bounds. Travis throws a nice hyzer there. And we'll see if Justin can round out all five drives inbounds. Definitely an excellent set of drives from the card here. Nothing too flashy. And if you didn't believe me before, you can see here just what this wind can do. Travis actually takes advantage of a great wind kick there. Leaves him with a drop in birdie. Sam gets a nice kick off that tall scotch broom, stays in bounds. I was talking to the other co-tournament director, Chris Fanger, um, who was the primary designer of this course, and he noted, you know, just the unique aspects of the land here. They got, you know, unlike a lot of golf courses that are very flat, not a lot of big trees. You know, this course has these great old growth trees to work with, a lot of elevation really unique course especially for a temporary ball golf course as Justin looks on wondering how that putt got out of there just the wind just grabbed his six footer there as Rick taps in a great birdie and Lewis does as well Lewis putting there with his blue firebird told me he threw that on about 80% of shots today and you can see even for those five foot tap-ins why not just throw a firebird this golf park a natural way to create sports facilities one of the world's fastest growing sports disc golf offers a fun and athletic experience for people of all ages no matter their performance level it is an activity the whole family can enjoy and easy to learn disc golf park is an overall concept for establishing a safe highly functional and diverse disc golf course a professionally designed course comes complete with disc catcher baskets throwing pads in a signet system. Constructing a nine hole disc golf course requires only about 10 acres of land and can be completed within a few months. 
Designing a disc golf course calls for a professional. An experienced course designer adds real value to the project while considering the needs of all the parties involved. Disc Golf Park offers a complete sports facility where people are able to engage in the sport on their own. On-course safety is ensured by throwing pads and an effective signal system. A disc golf course can be established practically anywhere. In a park, next to a school, in an outdoor recreation area, or in the woods. The cost of establishing a disc golf course is only a fraction of the cost of many other sports facilities. Best of all, a disc golf course can be built with minimum environmental impact. Disc Golf Park, a natural way to create sports facilities. So after three holes, Sam's lead has shrunk now to just two strokes with Rick Safiels getting a great birdie on that hole. Travis and Lewis also taking birdies, keeping this really tight with just, just a few strokes separating the top four guys on the card. Up next is hole four. This is a 290 foot par three. This is a really cool risk reward hole. You'll see it's a dog leg right with a mando to the left of this large clump of trees that cuts off a hyzer line. Like most converted ball golf courses, all of the greens are out of bounds. They're considered almost like water. Same with all of the bunkers. Um, so in addition to all of the barrier OBs, um, you'll also see a lot of um, a lot of OB islands, a lot of pins tucked right up against a lot of the out of bounds. As Lewis uh, noting that he was afraid he might roll all the way out in this wind and miss the Mando entirely. Travis, the first one of the group to go for the hole, he manages to barely hold on to the inbound strip behind the basket. It's definitely a tricky hole because if you go for the green, you can end up out of bounds as Sam does there. Let's see if Justin decides to follow suit. Looks like he was trying to go for the green, but couldn't turn his disc over, and he looks like he is just going to miss landing on a different OB green. This upshot is not any easier here in this wind. As you can see, Lewis somehow blasts through that bunker, manages to avoid the out-of-bounds. And you can see Rick there, not happy with his shot. He ends up out-of-bounds. Sam will be playing from the green. Um, the players were given the option uh, if they choose to elect to play from the out of bounds on places like bunkers and greens um, with, with the penalty stroke of course. As Rick will attempt to do here but manages to just, just lay up. Justin here for his par. He will take a tap in bogey. And here, Lewis for his three. He sinks a great putt. That's a fantastic putt in this wind. Definitely three feeling like a birdie on this hole. Oh, Sam gets an unfortunate break there. Kicks out strong side. Really an excellent putt. Unfortunate that didn't go in. So on hole four, Sam and Rick both take double bogeys with the penalty stroke. Um, Justin takes a four, and Lewis moves into one stroke back, uh, second place behind Sam, whose lead is shrunk now to just one stroke in four holes. So we move on to hole five. This is one of the shortest holes on the course, 265 foot par three. This hole plays significantly downhill. You'll see is definitely one of the most unique aspects of this course. Chris told me he was really excited to work with this piece of property, largely because of that elevation factor. Um, really consistently getting to go as high as 80 to 100 feet up and down. 
definitely not too common in ball golf courses. So this is a hyzer shot, definitely a birdie opportunity, but at the same time, um, the wind was pushing discs down and to the right all weekend um, over the path, which is out of bounds. And at the same time, if you go too far left, taking the safe route, you'll have a very scary upshot coming back down the hill as Rick nervously awaits the spotter, trying to see if his disc stays in. And it looks like it barely catches the left edge of the green as he gets a, he gets a happy wave from our other cameraman down there. Sam is actually going to go forehand here. Very risky play. He wants this to flip to the left side of the trees. It doesn't look like it will. He skips out of bounds, putting his slim lead at jeopardy here on hole five. Lewis throws a really good upshot and gets just a really unfortunate roll. Definitely not a not a forgiving course here. A lot of chances for big rollaways, OB rollaways. So Lewis takes out his blue Firebird. Lewis plays for Huck Lab. You can see the tri fly there, rocking it well. As Justin just manages to hang on. Breathes a sigh of relief there, keeping his chances for par alive on this hole. This is Sam for three. Puts it just a little past. He should have an easy four. And Lewis misses his putt. He's actually going to take a six. Fall a few strokes back of the pace. And with that putt for three, Rick gains another stroke back on Sam. Meaning that this card is just going to get even tighter in this final round. So on hole five, Sam takes a bogey to slip back to even par. Rick and Travis take threes, and Lewis drops back to fourth place with a triple bogey 6P. As Justin gets an excellent three on that hole. Moving on to hole six. Um, this is 235 feet, but it plays just about 60 feet uphill. So despite it being perhaps the shortest hole on this course, um, it's definitely a very unique shot. These guys are playing right into the wind. And there's OB if you go past that path. And uh, OB wraps all the way around the back of the hole. The hole is perched right up on an elevated tee box. Really unique hole. Definitely uh, gives these guys an incentive to really huck their shot hard, try to get it all the way up there have a chance for birdie. Aren't a lot of birdie opportunities on this course. Sam lets that one get up a little high. Definitely want to keep it low in this wind and just have the disc hug the side of the hill. Lewis plays an Anheuser shot with that blue Firebird. Throws an excellent shot. He's the closest only player with a really good birdie look. Sam looks like he might have overcompensated after going high on his drive. As Travis has to deal with the challenging green here, throws it about 40 feet by. Oh, Travis gets an unlucky break there. Great job running the basket, but rolls just short of the out of bounds. Perhaps a merciful break there that he didn't end up OB. And a nice upshot finally stops the bleeding. So this is Rick for his birdie. Lewis here also putting for birdie. See if he can gain a few strokes on the card. He'll take
take a tap in three though. Told me that he was just playing for par all day, knowing that par would be a really tremendous score. As Travis taps out a six, so after, sorry, Travis taps out a five, sorry. So you can see each of these guys is taking a turn getting the monster hole that really beats him down. No one is safe here. So on hole six, Travis takes a five to drop a few strokes back, and with that bogey, Sam's lead has evaporated. We now have a tie game here with Rick and Sam both at plus one, and Lewis just a few strokes behind. So we move on to hole seven. This is the longest hole on the second 18 Chinook wins course. Really impressive that they managed to put together 36 holes here. Definitely a lot of space to work with. And this is a really cool hole. This is, plays about 30 feet downhill. It's a dog leg right with OB on the right and left. It's a very generous landing area down there, but in this wind, uh, these guys could use all the space. As you see here, Rick tailing off to the right. He needs that to get lucky to stay in, but it will not. He is out of bounds on the right side there. Also playing a turnover, definitely trying to cut the corner. It's a risky line, but he manages to barely skirt by the trees on the right. Gotta say, I'm loving these little T signs here put together by Cherry Bomb. Definitely a nice, unique touch on this course. And Travis here goes for the full flex. And he throws a huge bomb furthest on the card. Rick needs to get lucky to hope that one stays in. And it looks like he does. He barely avoids a second out of bounds here. This is definitely a hole that would be a lot more generous without the wind. Definitely uh, would be a birdie opportunity for these pros as all these guys can definitely throw 400, 450 feet. The basket here is tucked right behind a bunker so you can see Lewis here is electing to lay up short of the pin. Take that bunker out of play. Here's Travis after that monster drive. He ends up just about 10 feet right. Swick throws a good layup, good recovery after that going out of bounds on the drive. Lewis just ends up a little bit short. Oh, and Justin barely misses his birdie putt. These guys know that there aren't a lot of places to get birdies on this course, and the par fours are perhaps the best place to do it, as Travis is the only player on the card to capitalize. Get some love there from Rick. Definitely a lot of great camaraderie on this card. You can tell these guys all really get along. They all know each other. They're all, for the most part, they're all Oregon pros exception of Travis in Vancouver, who ends up with the only birdie on the card to bring himself into a tie for third place, just two strokes out of the lead, as Sam regains a one-stroke lead heading into hole eight. Hole eight is a 300-foot par three. 
This is a really fun island hole. Definitely one of the more unique greens on this course. So you'll see here the path in front of the basket and the path beyond are both out of bounds. So this is just about a 40, 45 foot wide green to <laughs> land on. Um, Chris Banger, co-TD, was telling me that there's a very generous drop zone on this hole. So really encourage these players just to go for it and see what they can do. Ooh, as Lewis just misses a fantastic drive. Would have given him a chance at birdie here. Justin is the first player to land on that strip. That's a fantastic shot. Unfortunately, Sam drifts out of bounds. We'll see if Rick can show off some of that course savvy here, knowing this distance. And that's a beautiful shot there. Definitely giving him a good chance for par. So you can see the drop zone here, just about 90 feet short. Unfortunately, it looks like that one just slipped out of Sam's hands. It's going to be a second out-of-bounds penalty. Really unfortunate time, just after gaining the lead back. So we'll see yet another lead change here on hole 8. As Justin lays up his birdie putt. Ooh, and Sam misses his putt for five. So he will take a six on this hole, dropping three strokes. As Lewis taps out his bogey, and Justin taps out an excellent par on this hole. So Rick will take the other par here. And Sam will tap out a six. So after eight holes, Sam now is two strokes back of Rick, as is Travis and Lewis. So we have a three-way tie for second place with ten holes to go. And Justin's creeping up. He's only five strokes off the lead now. So he's been playing some very steady golf this round, quietly putting together a great round. Hole nine, last hole of this front nine, 345 foot par three. This is a really technical wooded shot very tight OB uh, on the left side of this basket. These guys are going to look to be skipping their disc along this sloped fairway, trying to see how far they can skip it down to the basket, which is just by that out-of-bounds line, which leaves a really scary downhill second shot if you can't keep it close. Chris was telling me um, after the tournament that the people at Chinook Winds were really thrilled with how great a turnout there was. 112 players made it all the way out here to the Oregon coast from all over the country to play in this event. Um, this is actually a collaboration with Disc Golf Park, one of the premier disc golf design companies. Um, they were they approached Chinook Winds um, trying to look to put in a permanent course, and you know they were definitely interested in the idea, but they suggested that maybe play a tournament first just to show the people at Chinook Winds how much interest there is in this game and how much the sport is growing out here on the Oregon coast and they were definitely very happy to see how professional and well run this tournament was. They said they got a lot of help from the local club, the Central Oregon Coast Disc Golf Club. Oregon Coast being a part of Oregon that really hasn't traditionally had a lot of disc golf courses. As you can see here, a mini twister is passing through the hole. I heard that this wind was swirling in all directions, so not only was the wind hard, but it was very unpredictable. Easily changing halfway through your drive. As Justin throws a very good upshot, just wants that to stay down there, give himself a chance at three. As Lewis, with the best drive of the group, unfortunately cannot convert that birdie. And Sam is just trying to get out of this hole without doing too much damage. As 
Travis taps in a great three. Sam sinks a putt for double bogey. So Sam will drop two strokes out of that tie for second. So after the front nine, uh, Rick holds a two-stroke lead at two over par. Travis and Lewis are two strokes back, and Sam is in fourth place with a plus six. Justin just one stroke back of that, still holding on. Thank you very much for watching the front nine. Please make sure to check out our Patreon page, and thanks to all of the great people who helped make this event possible, as well as make our coverage possible.